Wonderful evening, my dear students. I'm your chemistry teacher. So in this video, we are going to start a new chapter named Atomic Structure. So it is the basic chapter which every human being needs to know. I mean, technically, every student needs to know. So this, in this, actually, we know a few basics from our seventh grade, eighth grade. So, 7th grade, 6th uh, grade, 5th grade, grade, we have learned few, few words, similar words. But we are going to study about them in depth in 8th grade. So, today's video is in 8th grade uh, SSE board, the chapter atomic structure. Let's get started. Okay. Now, today's video, we are going to mainly focus about uh, an experiment. Okay. Today's video is about an experiment. Now, let's see. So, first, coming to the introduction of the chapter, you have to know the internal structure of an atom. Am I right? Now, this is basic. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows that this is the nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons. And then, around the nucleus, we have shells in which the electrons will be revolving. Right, that's just the structure which uh, shows you guys. Now, coming to the matter, coming to the matter. One second, let's keep right and here. Now, coming to the matter. Now we have known that our scientists. There are many scientists who help us in uh, finding these all informations. In fact, each of them has uh, discovered each one so that we can understand and, uh, you know, our human minds can process it. So they study about it. They, you know, conduct experiments, see if it's true, write a thesis and many things. So we, and they have worked a lot for us for this modern age, am I right? So let's thank them and let's start the lesson. Okay, now here we're gonna talk about uh, JJ Thompson, but before that, matter means we have already know the famous name J Dalton. Hmm? Matter is made up of tiny indivisible particles, which are called as atom. That's what he has proposed. But soon afterwards, we have known that um, it's, uh, you know, wrong it was proved wrong and then it was shown that uh, atoms can be divided into electrons protons and neutrons right okay now the basic thing which we have to know again is the definition of matter so we have discussed uh, from many years right what is matter anything that occupies space and has mass right and can be perceived via senses additional point okay now let's go to the next slide so as I said in this video, we are going to see how electrons were discovered. Okay. So, it was discovered by J.J. Thompson here. Now, listen to this experiment carefully. So, the first thing which we are going to learn, the first uh, uh, one in the experiment is the uh, setting. How did he set it? Let's see that. Now, slowly. First here... We have a diagram. Well, I'll explain you slowly. So, what are we trying to do? He's trying to find this, like discover electron. Now, first he took a discharge tube and attached a vacuum pump to it. And there were also two metal plates which act as electrodes. One cathode and one anode. Okay. Negative cathode, positive anode as we know. So, these metal uh, plates were placed, okay, at the end. And here we have a vacuum pump. And then these both metal plates were connected to a high voltage generator or let's say electricity generator. So, the negative cathode was connected to the negative part and um, anode was co connected to the ne positive part. Now... First, they use the vacuum pump to remove most of the air and create a very low pressure, about 0 0.1 mg, I guess, 0 0.1 m of hg, okay, m of hg, I'll just write it down, one second, yes, 
uh, I'll use black just a second. All right. 0 0.1 M of Hg was the pressure maintained. The air uh, which was there. Now, <clears throat> so what will happen is very listen carefully. Now, as you can see, uh, here there were all there was also one more thing. There's a point to be in, uh, noted down which is not in the diagram, which I will draw. Okay. Uh, okay. This is too thick. Just a second. Uh, Okay, one second. This went off. I'll just upload the image. Uh, yes. Sorry for the inconvenience, everybody. Let's uh, continue. Yes. So let me decrease the thickness. This is also too much. This is too much. Yes, this will do. Okay. Now I'll draw thin coat. This thin coat is nothing but I'll write it here. This is ZNS, zinc sulfide. It acts as a fluorocerin screen. And I'll we'll understand. I'll tell you why. Now as the electricity passed through and there was very low pressure inside the discharge tube, you know, few rays were started appearing and, were, you know, like, uh, he observed that few rays were getting generated at cathode and were traveling towards anode, okay? They were generated towards cathode from uh, cathode and were traveling towards anode. Now, these rays hit the fluorescent uh, screen and form a spark. This shows that an electron is there. Now, hence electrons are negatively charged particles. We will see why, but see. Now, let's discuss the points which are here. I hope you'll understand it more clearly then. Otherwise, first one. He conducted the experiment of discovery of an electron in a discharge tubes. Okay, first. Second, he has taken two metal plates and joined them to a high voltage generator. Here it is there. So, uh, third, the electrode. Okay, it's repeated twice. The electrode which is connected to the negative terminal is called as cathode. And the electrode which is connected to the positive terminal is called anode. Right? terms to be known very important hmm? yeah now he fourth point he maintained very low pressure inside with the help of a vacuum pump which is nearly about 0 0.1 m of hg clear now fifth point when he supplied high voltage some rays were getting generated at cathode and were traveling towards anode clear now this is what i told i wrote it in text that's it so, this is the first observation in the whole experiment when he started. Now, first one, this is one. Now, second one is, I'll draw here. We actually have to draw. It's the same diagram, but I have to draw. Just a second. Yes, I hope you can see right now. Um... If you give me a second, I'll just uh, make the space a bit big so I can increase the size of the picture. Okay. Now I'll increase the size of the picture and I hope it's clear. So in the same in the same experiment, same continuation process, what does he do is he will keep a object. An object can be anything, right? So let's take uh, something, a cardboard piece or an object. Mm -hmm. When these rays striked through the object, the shadow was formed. Now uh, let me uh, take another color here. Okay, this will do. 
the shadow was formed. I've taken the grayish color. This resembles shadow, okay? So when these um, rays striked through the object, shadow was formed. Hence, we can conclude from this experiments that, what can we conclude? That the these rays travel in straight line. Okay, they travel in straight line. Clear? Go in a straight line. Clear? Yes. Now coming to discussing the points. The same thing. I hope you are clear with this. Just uh, this is to show few properties of the cathode rays. Okay. Now, just a second. Yeah. Now, when he placed an object in the middle of the discharge tube or in the path of the rays, right, he observed a shadow formation near anode here. You can see this part. By this, he concluded that cathode rays travel in a straight line. They're rectilinear. Am I right? Now, I hope you're clear with this. Now, coming, okay, this is the second one. Second one. Now, third one. Uh, just a sec. Again, I have to draw a diagram here. Nothing much. Okay. I'll use black. Now, do you know what's a pinwheel? It's like a light-weighted fan, students, okay? It's a light-weighted fan. Now, here, when these, when these rays were passing through, they didn't, they don't pass through, but, um, what will happen is, uh, when the ray strike this, strike this pinwheel, it started rotating towards your anode. Means it's uh, started, uh, you know, rotating towards the right side. Clear? Then, what he observed is, I mean, what can you know? That it applies some force. Means that also means it's moving. It is moving means, if the rays are moving, means we can say that it contains mass, which helps to move the pinwheel. And it also has velocity, velocity right? Means it has some speed in the given direction. Am I right? So, if a particle contains mass and velocity, what does it have? Guess it? Yes, correct. Now, these rays have momentum. Okay. Should I write it here? I'll write it here. Momentum. They have momentum. Clear? Okay. Now, I hope you're clear. This is another property. It shows that the uh, cathode rays contain, like the particles which are there in cathode rays contain mass and velocity, which helps in moving of this. Um, and then uh, they also, hence, uh, as they have mass and velocity, they also have momentum. Yeah? Mass into velocity is momentum, right? Yes, you have to know that. Okay. So, let's discuss the points again. Now, coming to this. When J.J. Thompson has placed a pinwheel at the center of the discharge tubes, as the cathode rays strike the pinwheel, it started moving towards the node, anode. Towards the anode means like this only, students. It's like this or towards the right side also. By this, he concluded that cathode rays are having particles which contain mass as well as velocity. Hence, they also have momentum. Am I right? Momentum is nothing but mass into velocity. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, this is our which experiment, students? Third one. Am I right? Sorry, one second. Yes, it's the third one. So, number three. The last one, the last one is number four, of course. One second. Yes, number four. What will happen here? is in this one we will know about the charge now i have to draw here let's say let's say a bar magnet is placed the north side and south side the north one is closer towards your um, discharge tube clear students or this or it also has an electric field here negative electric field clear electric field negatively charged substances or else uh, uh, negatively charged substances are here. 
Now, when the rays are traveling like this, when it comes here, uh, suddenly they start deflect. They deflect and go towards the anode. I mean, go this side. They go towards the other side. All the rays also deflect and go to the other side. Means when do they deflect, guys? When they have uh, like poles. So, this north is generally negative charged, okay? North pole is generally represented or known as negative pole, understood? So, negative charge. So, when negative charge and negative charge are uh, close by only, they uh, uh, deflect, am I right? So, hence, we can say that the cathode rays, the particles of the cathode rays have negative charge, am I right? Clear? Same for the electric, uh, same here if we have negatively charged substances here, negative, negative, deflect, so it goes towards the other side. Am I right? That's it. Now, we'll see the points and um, conclude this. Okay. Now, when J.J. Thompson placed north pole of bar magnet near the discharged tubes, he observed that the cathode rays were deflected away from the north pole, which is known as commonly negative pole. Am I right? Now, by this we conclude that cathode rays consist of particles which are negatively charged. See, what I told is written there. Okay. So, I hope we are clear with the fourth one also. These basically show that cathode rays in the presence of electric and magnetic field, cathode rays in the presence of a pinwheel, and we have also seen cathode rays in presence of an object. Okay. And cathode rays in presence of fluorescent screen. Just so this is it. Four slides for our video. Five actually, but uh, let's say so. Today's video is basically mainly about the discovery of electrons. Okay, the experiments. Now in our next video, we will learn about discovery of protons and nucleons, etc. Okay, if you like my explanation, please subscribe to my channel. Bye, students.